Hi, Stephen Horn here. This is my third in my foundational series to lay out some of the things I've learned as a natural healer. And this is probably one of my most important messages. My goal is to train alternative healthcare practitioners to stop treating diseases and start building health in other people. Because I want to see more health care in this country and less disease care. And this video will really help you understand the difference. One of the most important discoveries that I ever made was when I learned that symptoms were not my enemy. And I first learned this with acute disease, which is what I'm going to talk about in this video. I read in the works of Samuel Thompson where he said that he'd found that the learned doctors were wrong in considering fever a disease or an enemy. He said heat was life, or the, in other words, the ability to generate heat or energy was a function of life, and cold is death. And so it was a diminution of heat or a loss of energy that caused death, not the fever. And so instead of trying to treat the fever the way all medical doctors of his era were doing, which was to try to bring the fever down, Samuel Thompson gave people cayenne pepper, a warming stimulating herb, lobelia to remove obstructions from the system by relaxing the body and causing perspiration, and sweated them. Put them in uh, a chair with a pan under their feet, put a hot rock in the pan, poured some water in to create steam, and wrapped them in a blanket and made them sweat. And that's how he cured a fever. And it was kind of interesting because I've tried sweating therapy for colds and flu and fever, and it works very, very well. But I got to thinking about that, and I thought, well, dead people don't get runny noses. Dead people don't throw up. Dead people don't get diarrhea. Dead people don't have symptoms. Dead people just decompose. So therefore, it made sense to me that all of the symptoms of acute disease were not actually disease at all. They were the efforts of the body to get rid of the disease. In other words, in acute illness, the body is trying to discharge the things that are irritating it. It uses fever to boost the immune system because fever causes an activation of the immune system that causes the immune system to start producing more white blood cells and more antibodies to tag invading viruses. Fever actually helps the body get over a viral infection more quickly and suppressing a fever actually gives the virus an upper hand by suppressing the immune system and keeping the immune system from being able to gain a more rapid um, attack, counterattack against a viral inv invasion. When you have a runny nose or when you're coughing, your sinuses or respiratory tract in your lungs are trying to clear out of your body things that are irritating it. When you get diarrhea, your body is trying to purge irritating toxic substance from your digestive tract. The same thing happens when you throw up. If you get food poisoning, the fastest cure is to throw up. Because as soon as you throw up, you've thrown off the irritant. You've thrown off what is causing the disease. And therefore, the need for the symptom rapidly goes away. The symptom is generated by the body fighting the disease, not by the disease itself. I further learned about this in reading about um, chicken pox and measles. You know, both of these diseases, before we started vaccinating for them, were very common childhood diseases. And when a child was exposed to these diseases, there was about a two-week period in which there were no symptoms. Then suddenly, there might be a fever, uh, and shortly after the fever, the body maybe breaks out in the traditional pox or bumps that are the measles. Well, guess what? That's the immune system actually kicking the disease out of the body. The pox are not the result of the measles or the chicken pox virus. They are the result of the body expelling the virus and associated toxins and irritants from the body. Using um, things that lower fever with chicken pox has been proved to, proven to create a disease called shingles in which the chickenpox virus goes dormant in the body only to appear later 
as a different manifestation of the same disease called shingles. These are just a few examples of how suppressing symptoms in acute illness is actually suppressing the immune responses that help your body get over the disease. That's why I coined the term, the reason why, or, or coined this phrase, the reason why medical science will never discover a cure for the common cold is because the cold is the cure. What we associate with the cold, as in the symptoms, are the immune system curing us. I'll say that again. The symptoms we associate with things like the colds and flu and other acute diseases are actually the result of the immune system at work curing us. They are not the disease. They are not the enemy. Almost all medications in the drug world are targeted at relieving symptoms of acute illness. Think about the remedies you've heard for um, cold, cold medications. It relieves all these quote unquote symptoms of the common cold doesn't say it helps cure the cold because it can't cure the cold. In fact, suppressing the symptoms actually prolongs the length of the cold. I read once a clip from the Wall Street Journal that said they did a study and found out that taking antihistamines for a cold doubled the length of time it took to recover by trying to inhibit the mucus secretions that the body was using to expel the things that were irritating it. It takes the body longer to recover. When I discovered this really amazing insight into acute illness, it changed my entire approach. Instead of thinking about what herbs and remedies can I use to make the cough go away, to make the runny nose stop running, to make the fever come down, to counteract disease as I'd been taught by allopathic medicine, I started thinking about what is the body trying to do and how can I help the body accomplish what it is trying to do. How can I assist it and make it easier for the body to be able to achieve its goal of throwing off what is irritating it? So for example, you get an upset stomach, you start to feel nauseous, you take some lobelia, which actually helps you throw up, and then you get better faster. When you have sinus congestion or respiratory congestion, drink lots of water, and you take herbs that thin mucus and help promote the, the the action of the lungs and sinuses to expel that mucus, and you increase that mucus discharge and get it out faster, and you get better faster. You, you take herbs that enhance the sweating when you have a fever, and, and you sweat out the fever because the body is trying to elevate the temperature and raise a sweat, which is what Samuel Thompson did. Over and over again, I found that when I applied this method with myself, and members of my family and later with friends and clients that people made rapid dramatic recovery from things that were said to be quote unquote incurable in terms of anything that modern medicine can do to, to cure them other than to wait for them to you know work through them the, the problem themselves so most people would actually be far better off if they become acutely ill with following the old adage of drinking lots of water and resting in bed and not eating because when you have this discharge, when the body's trying to throw off these things, adding more food simply makes it harder for the body to do what it needs to do to throw off the discharge. That's why Hippocrates made a famous statement, feed a cold and starve a fever. He didn't mean you feed people when they have a cold and you starve them when they had a fever. It actually means if you feed a cold, you will have to starve a fever. I one time gave a talk on this very thing that I'm explaining to you right now in front of a group of people on the East Coast, and a man who had a PhD in immunology came up to me afterwards and said, you are exactly right. You are 100% right in what you're saying about how the immune system works and how the symptoms are generated by the immune system. Now, later I learned to translate this over into thinking about chronic symptoms and chronic disease, which I will explain about in the next video. But for now, I want you to get this idea into your mind 
that when you think in terms of a disease symptom and you treat the disease symptom, trying to get rid of it, you're actually interfering with your body's ability to heal. If we could get that message out to the world, it would revolutionize medicine because people would stop looking for symptomatic relief and start looking for real cures. And real cures always come by supporting the innate intelligence of the body in what it's trying to do to get you well. If you enjoyed this message, please like this um, video on YouTube or Facebook and uh, go to stephenhorn.com for more information. You can sign up for one of my newsletters um, in the links below. And please share this message with other people so we can get this information out to as many people as possible. Thank you for watching.